Well, good morning, Magandang Umaga, and welcome to today's episode of My P.I. Dream. Boy, we have an exciting episode for you today. Today we're doing a uh, kind of a 30-day update on information regarding our Starlink satellite system. Plus, we did a very exciting DIY home project that has to do with the Starlink. And if you're into DIY and if you're into Starlink, today's episode might be for you. So let's go ahead and get today's episode started. Now, without further delay, let's get today's video underway. Let's talk a little bit about what today's episode is all about. As you know, and if you've been following us, we installed the Starlink system here at Villa Feliz to be able to provide satellite internet into our home, maybe as a substitute for the, our internet provider, which is PLDT here inside the Philippines. Now today's episode is gonna mainly focus on a modification that we did to the original installation of our Starlink system. Remember, we installed it on our Lanai which is our patio on the second floor because we have the elevation for the antenna that gives us a really good look angle at the satellites up in the sky. And we also took the router, the Starlink satellite uh, internet router, and we kept it outside as well because we connected to a network connection that we have on the side of our night that brings us access inside our house. Now, the main reason that we kept the router on the outside of the house is because we have a network connection on our patio on the second floor that gives us access to our network inside our house. And we assume that the Starlink router by itself would be able to give us great coverage in the backyard. Now, in theory, we thought that was a great idea, but we didn't assume for the type of weather that we have inside the Philippines. Sometimes we have some torrential rains. Sometimes we have some really bad winds when we have something like a typhoon coming through. So we needed to do something to protect the router that we plan on keeping on the outside. Now, traditionally, if you were doing an install of this, uh, of this type, what you would do, you would penetrate a hole in the side of your house and you would run your cable, your Starlink cable that goes from the satellite antenna to your Starlink router on the inside of the house. But that involves cutting a pretty big hole, a big chunk of concrete if, if you have a concrete house like we do here inside the Philippines. And then you you have to do something like use the optional uh, the optional covers that they sell at Starlink to be able to cover that big hole in the side of your wall. Well, we didn't want to do that. We didn't want to make a big hole in the side of our house, which is why we went ahead and used the existing network we have on the inside, and we planned on leaving the router on the outside. So when we came up with the option of leaving it on the outside, I had to think to myself, hmm, we probably need a uh, some type of a waterproof enclosure, something to protect the router against high winds and extremely heavy rain on the on, on the outside during inclement weather. Uh, so I decided to go ahead and build a waterproof enclosure. Now, when you're designing a waterproof enclosure, you have to take a lot of things into consideration. You also have to take in consideration thing, things like cooling, because when you put something inside a box and you close it and it's electronics, you're going to need to be able to cool that, uh, that item that you have inside of that device, the, the satellite router. Uh, so this is what we came up with here. Uh, we came up with a waterproof enclosure with cooling and the ability to hook up all the other little components that we need to make this a full satellite system. Then the next challenge that we had is we are installing our router in a metal container. This is a metal waterproof enclosure. And metal is really not good for Wi-Fi, for radio signals. It will it will kill any type of a, a radio signal that it is trying to transmit out or to receive inside the box. Uh, and you remember, we were using the router to be able to provide internet access via Wi-Fi back here in the pavilion in the backyard. So we have to come up with another solution. So today you're going to see the solution for that as well. Now, over the last couple of days, we had a really bad storm that came through here. It was a tropical depression. Uh, uh, it, it was just brought a lot of rain here. So one of the big questions that people were asking about is how does rain and clouds affect uh, the reception of the satellite signal uh, for Starlink? And we're going to talk about that at the very end of today's episode. So let's go ahead and get into today's project, which has to do with building the waterproof enclosure for the Starlink system. And then at the very end, we'll discuss how it actually is performing. 
Okay, so uh, what we have here is our basic components for this project. And the project, uh, the main reason for this project is to find some way to protect the Starlink router, the Gen 2 router. Now the Gen 2 router is IP54 rated, uh, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to go one step further for protection uh, to try to keep it out of the environment as much as possible. Because remember, this is going to be kind of a permanent long-term solution, uh, not just going on a camping trip. It's going to be what we're going to use for entry for internet into our house. So I have a waterproof enclosure over here. Uh, it's, it was difficult to find this here uh, in, the, in the Philippines, so I ended up buying this on, on Amazon.com. Even though that it comes out of China, it's just not available. I cannot find it inside the Philippines. Uh, and it's really nice because it has the, the, the ability to mount some fans inside here. So once we close the door, because this is a metal enclosure and it will get hot in the sun, uh, so we want to be able to have fresh air passing through. Uh, and one of the components for that is the AC Infinity, the T8. The T8 system system over here uh, has two fans built in and what we'll do is we'll do a push-pull type of a uh, air movement on the inside very similar to what we did on the television enclosure for the pavilion and I want to add this additional uh, net gear and this is a five port uh, Ethernet PoE Plus unmanaged switch right here. Now this is multifunction and it, it allows me for some expansion, for some growth. And we'll do a test and see which works better, the, the native antenna on the Starlink router itself or an access point. Now also for connectivity from the outside of the box to the inside of the box, we need electricity. So I have a bulkhead connector, an IC electrical bulkhead connector that we'll put somewhere inside the bottom and we'll take a cable, whether it be this one or I might need one a little bit longer to go from the bottom. This will plug into the bottom and go over to our electrical connection uh, on the wall in the lanai and I need some way to get internet from the inside to the outside from the switch to any type of outside connection and what we'll do is we'll mount some of these uh, the e ethernet connectors uh, RJ45 connectors uh, that are meant to be used outside uh, on, the, on the bottom here so we have the ability to connect without leaving the store open. Now to be honest with you, I believe the hardest task in this whole project here is installing the fans for the AC Infinity cooling system. I was able to do it uh, and it wasn't as difficult as I thought it was. I just had to do some machine skills here. Anyway, I have the, this is a push-pull or a pull-push type of a system right here. This is going to pull air in from the vents on the bottom as well as the vent on the side. And it's going to push it and do some cooling inside here. And then we have the the push. Uh, it's going to push the air out. It will come out through this ventilation here. And if there is any positive built up inside here, it can also send it out through uh, the, the bottom or wherever. So it, most of it's probably going to come from this side over to this side right here. Now I decided the next thing that I want to do, I want to go ahead and install the bulkhead connectors for the uh, ethernet cable. Uh, these are the pass through. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put four, four of these in the bottom in the back. And if you look at our net gear switch over here, we have four ports here and we have one main port. And this main port over here is going to be the one that connects to our Starlink router. So that will be internal. We will have the Starlink router here. We'll take an Ethernet cable from the Ethernet adapter that goes from there, connect here, which will provide data to all of these uh, connections right here. Now for these, we will use one of these and connect to the back side of the pass-through and the bottom side of this we will take and we will run the cable from this enclosure right here over to our access port, the RJ45 port that's on the side of the lanai that we looked at the other day. That will give us access to all the network inside the house. Then I still have three ports left over here and the three ports here we can use it for if we want to uh, turn off the Wi-Fi, because it's going to be in a metal enclosure, so it's not going to do us any good. So we can turn off the Wi-Fi in the Starlink router. We can install either on the front, if we want to, or via one of the Ethernet connections uh, on the bottom of the enclosure. We can run an access point to the front of the lanai. We have lots of options. And then we still have two more ports here, and two more ports, we can use these if we want to add an additional, maybe two more CCTV cameras or something like that. We can do whatever we want to, but we have some flexibility. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut some holes. It's actually 20 
2.8 millimeters is what you need for the hole size here. I have a 20, uh, that's, and this is close enough, and what I'll do is I'll use a file, and we'll clean up that additional approximately one millimeter, and we'll slip it in, it shouldn't be a problem. Now the next thing we have to do, we have to put our electrical IEC connector on the outside here. So we will cut a hole here, we'll mount this and we'll do the wiring. We'll leave the, the wire uh, blank at the end, it'll be raw wire and we'll connect it to a multi-strip outlet. Because on the inside here, we're going to have to connect the Netgear switch. We have to connect the power supply for the uh, for the Infinity Air uh, fans inside here, as well as we need to be able to supply power to the Starlink router itself. All right, now we have our IEC electrical connector to the enclosure itself. We'll just plug in an IEC plug, plug into the wall, and that will provide power inside the box. I have to find the electrical solution, and what I did was I ordered some parts. I ordered a multi-strip surge protector, very small, a profile one. I just have to see how it fits inside here. And at the same time that I ordered that, I ordered a DIN rail. A DIN rail is like if you have circuit breakers inside your house, they will connect conveniently to a rail and you can put them in a new circuit breaker or out. Or in the case here, we're going to have a DIN rail possibly that goes across here. And then I'll put three plugs inside here for the three electrical devices that we'll need to connect inside uh, the enclosure. Now while I was doing uh, the ordering for that and I came back out I said well what can I do next? I decided well let me go ahead and clean up some of this wiring. Uh, so what you see I connected some of the USB wires that go to the fan. I went ahead and moved them behind the back shelf area right here. Uh, so it's really kind of hidden and it's clean. And you'll also see I have the temperature probe located in the top of the enclosure. You want to put your temperature probe, if you have something that's thermostatically controlled, near the top because the heat rises and that will give you the most accurate sense of the amount of heat that's inside your enclosure. Now since I have all the wires kind of cleaned up inside here, the next logical step was for me to work on the, the Netgear, uh, the PoE Plus switch. And that's what I have here. You can see how I mounted it to the bottom of the removable shelf. Uh, this is going to work really well and not take up a lot of room. And what I did was to make sure that it doesn't slide, move around inside, I just took a piece of spare wood that I had here and I drilled a hole in the side of the shelf. And uh, on the other side here, there are two screws that mount if you were actually going to mount this to a wall so this doesn't move back and forth or left to right. And conveniently as well, the DC power supply right here, right behind the switch. Uh, and you see it doesn't take up a lot of space inside here. That's really important when you're doing a, doing a component type of a system. And I modified the shelf, the shelf rack itself to be able to provide uh, IEC power connection to this as well. So this plugs in right here. And then the other end will plug in once we have some type of a power solution in the bottom. Then all together, the shelf will sit inside. Just like that. And then the router will sit on the top. You have this here. The temperature controller will be down here in the bottom. And the Ethernet connections will go from here to the four uh, ports that are on the back like I showed you earlier. My DIN rail came in yesterday. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this and I'm gonna mount one on the top and one on the bottom right there. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to put one of the DIN rail mounted outlets on one side, one on the other, and then I'll probably put one down on the bottom somewhere uh, to maximize on the space that I have here. Remember the, the router, the Starlink router is gonna fit here and I should have enough room on both sides. So we're limited for space inside here, but we don't want everything to be so close together, uh, but we wanna have good airflow. So let's go ahead and cut the DIN rail and do the mounting and hook up the electrical. Now I've got all of the service outlets on the inside and they're all wired up. I just want to do a quick ohm check to make sure that we have all the wires. Uh, so it's going to go through this plug. This is where we're plugging to the wall, to the IEC uh, connector on the inside of the box. And it's a serial chain. It goes from that outlet to that outlet to this one. So I should easily be able to check the end one. Uh, so we'll move it over to ohms. And we'll go ahead and check for continuity. Go ground to ground. Okay, and then we'll go one of the load or the neutral, 
So right now, and normally what I do is I go across each one of them to make sure we don't have any shorts. And then we'll check one more, which is the other one, either the line or the neutral. And it's good. So we don't have any issues. We got the electrical connected up properly. Now that we have the electricity all hooked up in here and not plugged in, I'm getting ready to plug the box in in just a second here. I took the opportunity to uh, make the connections for the AC Infinity, the controller here. And this is what provides uh, power to the fans. And we're gonna go ahead and plug it in now and we'll do a functional check on that. So, okay. You see, uh, it, it comes on, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, the, I have an alarm setting. I'm gonna go with the, this alarm of 110. The, the Starlink router has a range of like negative something very, very cold to 122 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, so I don't think it'll ever, even ever make it up to this 110, uh, but that will be an audible alarm that will go on and it'll beep every three seconds. And I have the, the setting at 94 when I want it to kick in and the fan start blowing. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna change the mode I'm going to change the mode over to smart and what the AC Infinity will do as it approaches the 94 it will slowly start the fans on and slowly move air and if it continues to get hot as the temperature rises it will go faster and faster and faster and that's the way we have it in our TV enclosure out in the pavilion and it works great like that. So everything works good it's showing that the uh, thermostat inside is at 82 degrees inside and uh, that's the ambient temperature right now okay well this is all works right now next thing i'm going to do is uh i just received the the ethernet cables right here the special ethernet cables that we're going to use from here and connect to our ports on the bottom of the of the enclosure. Now, normally I would build my own cables, but since we have a 90 degree connection here, remember we're limited to our space and we want to take advantage of every bit of space inside the small enclosure. Now, if I had a straight out uh, RJ45 connector on here, it would bump up against the case lid, uh, the door when we close it. So I picked up these very nice 12 inch long these uh, prefabricated from the factory. And they'll plug in here. You'll see we'll have, we'll have plenty of room now for the door to close. And then the back one will run into all the ports, the RJ45 uh, ports that are on the bottom of the case so that we can get from inside the case to the outside the case while everything stays nice and dry on the inside. Well, there you go. Uh, it, it seems to work quite well. I will dress these wires up. I'll pull them out of the way a little bit uh, to get away from the control panel right here. But the control panel, we're still waiting on a mounting bracket. It's going to be a mounting bracket that this entire panel connects to that's going to mount to the base of the enclosure. Uh, so we'll, we'll get these a little bit out of the way so this will be more presentable, easier to get to the buttons. Also, this last, this is the aggregate uh, uh, of the net gear. Uh, switch that we have here and this will connect into that that Ethernet adapter that we have on a Starlink router uh, So this will come from the router. Of course, we'll go from the satellite uh, down to the antenna the antenna uh, To the Ethernet adapter that goes inside the Starlink router once we put it inside here And then this will be able to take the data out of the the router from the Starlink router go into the switch here and send it out on all of these ports right here. Uh, these are all PoE plus. Okay, let's go on the lanai outside the master bedroom right here and take a look at the install of what we've been working on over the past week or so. Uh, we have our box, this is our access box. I still have to groom some of the cabling here. Uh, we're in testing phase right now. So we'll go ahead and open up and we'll see what it looks like in operational mode. So in operational mode, you can see we have the Starlink router here. We have the controller. You can see the controller for the fans down here. Uh, you see we have activity on the network and the, the fans are actually running. It's running at between one and two uh, on the fan speed right here, keeping this box, this enclosure cool. Everything on the inside. You can see on our network, uh, our Netgear switch we have right here, you see the activity. Well, this is the Starlink uh, Ethernet adapter, SLEA that I've got labeled here. House is where it has our connection that goes from the bottom 
into the house, provides all the internet access that we need on all three floors inside the house. We, we have our access point right here, which is Ubi Ubiquity Network, UBNT. Uh, once I decide to, if I want to, I have a CCTV. I have two additional ports on the bottom that we talked about earlier. I can hook up another camera or two cameras up here if I want to hook those up later on. Uh, so everything seems to be operating well now here. Our solution for getting internet to the backyard since we have the router in the enclosure and it's not going to provide internet to the backyard of the pavilion is I hooked up the Ubiquity. This is the Ubiquity uh, Nano Station M2 and this is a very very good uh, access point it can be it can be used in bridge mode it can be do access point it can be acting as a router there's so many things you can configure this thing to but it provides great coverage to the entire backyard back here. I actually had to drop down the power level quite a bit because I went like two blocks over and it was still strong. I could pick up my own internet from two blocks on the other side. So I had to bring down the power uh, so that I didn't interfere with anybody else on the other side of the subdivision. Uh, so you can see it's connected. This is a temporary type of a connection, but it will hold uh, even in very high winds. Uh, if we ever put the satellite antenna in stow, I just remove this and it will allow the satellite antenna to go into full stow mode but since this is a fixed antenna right here pretty much a permanent installation and it will only the antenna will only do a little bit of movement just a little bit up and down mostly this way if it ever does an adjustment over our satellite constellation up there it should never hit this this uh, uh access point right here uh, so i have temporary wires right here we'll clean this up later on but you can see that's how everything is installed now now, that network connection on the lanai upstairs in the wall connects up to this patch panel that goes into the switch here down on the first floor, which provides internet access through the rest of the house. This connects up to access points on all three floors. And right now, it is providing the Starlink internet service throughout our entire house. This actually that's disconnected, this belongs to our PLDT connection. We disconnected it because we wanted to see if we can be fully sufficient without PLDT and have uh, high quality internet in our entire house, all three floors. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a minute. Now back here in the pavilion, I'm getting all bars for my Wi-Fi connection, so it's full strength. And let's go ahead and do a speed test to see uh, what our results are on a speed test. Now this is going from my laptop to the access point and going through the Starlink system. So our download looks like 28.5. And our uplink looks somewhere between 15 and 16. So 15.9, 28.5 down, 15.9 uh, on the upload. And that's not bad for Wi-Fi to the backyard right here. That's more than we need to provide high definition streaming to our TV back here and access to the, uh, the folks who are sitting back here in the backyard. Well, anyway, uh, that's a good thing. Now, I promised that we were gonna answer a couple of questions and two questions that we're going to answer is how do I get Starlink in the Philippines as well as does, does uh, bad weather? things like rain and uh, stormy weather, does that affect the performance of your Starlink system? Well, the first question, how do I get Starlink? You just go to starlink.com. On starlink.com, you'll just order from there. Uh, what I will tell you is you will probably have a problem when you put in your shipping address or the location that you want for delivery. Uh, at the very beginning, where, it's, where you put where you are located, and if you put that address, it'll probably say uh, they, there is no service in that area, or there'll, there'll be some kind of complication. Most of the people are sending me uh, questions about that, and the way to get around that is you just drag on the map to where your actual location is. It's like Google Maps and you will open it up, you will point and it will give you a Latin long. You use that Latin long 
for your actual location, your physical location. Uh, for, and then for your shipping location, you will put your address that you have that you want something delivered to your house. That's where the mail comes to, where your delivery services come to. And you should have no problem getting your system here. Also, you're going to have to use a credit card. You will have to use a credit card to make your order. Uh, the next thing had to do with performance. How does rain and wind and clouds affect the performance of your Starlink system? Well, having it for 30 days, I will say uh, that this system performed really well in clouds, whether it be light clouds or heavy clouds. Wind is not going to make any difference. But what I will tell you is rain will make a difference. Rain is the same thing with all satellite systems from the past up until today because rain acts like an attenuator. Uh, it acts like an insulator between the satellite signal and the reception of your antenna. So when we get rain here, not so much light rain. Drizzle is no problem. We have no uh, no uh, stopping of our service. But once we get a little bit more of a heavy rain, you'll start to see buffers sometimes, or you'll see that the uh, the network is not available because it is attenuating that signal. Uh, but that doesn't happen all the time. And for the quality of the signal that we've been getting so far, it's acceptable because even with our internet provider that we still have here, which is PLDT. What we notice during heavy traffic times, and that's between maybe 6.30 p.m. in the evening and about 10 o'clock at night when everybody is using it, even though we're on fiber and we have a robust fiber plan, we start getting buffers and problems because of the uh, the servers that they have inside the PLDT offices. They haven't upgraded those, so we're suffering here. But what I've noticed with the Starlink, even during those times, 24 hours a day, we have no issues under normal weather conditions here. We have great streaming of all of our videos and our internet needs. Anyway, that's about it for today. Uh, I hope this was an interesting episode and if you like DIY episodes like this, continue to follow our, our DIY series here on My PI Dream. Well, that's it. If you enjoyed today's episode, please give me a thumbs up. Please share it. And if you have not subscribed, just click on that little My PI Dream heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen you'll be subscribed and if you ring that bell you'll be notified the next time i upload a new video so until such time from right here in the very beautiful philippines you have a wonderful and blessed day today's episode and you would like to see more just like these just click on one of the helpful links over to your right and you might be able to pick up on some good information on DIY projects how to or if you are interested in moving to the Philippines and building you'll find answers there as well <laughs>